through some of my videos over the last year, we've set up virtual machines to run different flavors of Linux operating systems on a Raspberry Pi. Then more recently, I set up a VM to run Windows 11. But what about Android? There's actually a way that you can get Android apps to run absolutely natively on your Raspberry Pi 5. So there's no emulation, they're just running straight on top of the platform. So you get the maximum performance out of it. Let me show you how, right here on Jeff's Pie in the Sky. <music> Hello once again, Pi Geeks and Techno Nerds all over the world. My name's Jeff, and I'm an IT professional who's been in the industry for over 30 years. I've been using Raspberry Pi since they first came out, so I want to show you some of the projects that I've done. If you like what you see on this channel, please hit that thumbs up button, subscribe if you want to see more, and hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. It really helps tickle the algorithm, and I'm trying to get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So any support that you can give the channel in that time would be really useful and I appreciate every single one of you. Let me know in the comments how you get on running Android on your Raspberry Pi. And if you've got any ideas for other things that you'd like to see me do with a Raspberry Pi in the future, put those in there as well. Now the first thing you're going to need for this is a Raspberry Pi 5. I haven't tried this on a Pi 4 or below, but I just don't think you'd get the same level of performance out of those machines. If you do try and you have some success, please let me know in the comments. Now, the other thing you're going to need is a fair amount of storage. Where we're going to be downloading Android apps into our Android environment, some of these can be pretty big, especially the games. So if you're using an SD card for your storage, make it as big as you can. For the purpose of this, I'm going to be using a SanDisk Extreme Pro 128GB SSD. And I'm going to be booting my Raspberry Pi from that. Now for an operating system, I've just used Raspberry Pi Imager to put a copy of Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit onto that SSD. Once you have all of that set up, you're ready to roll. So here I have my Raspberry Pi 5 straight after the OS install. And just as normal, the first thing to do here is to update all of the software to make sure it's running all of the latest stuff. And you can do this with sudo apt update double ampersand sudo apt upgrade minus y. And now everything's up to date. But before I reboot, there are two changes that we need to make. The first change we need to make is in the slash boot slash firmware slash config.txt file. So open that up with your favorite editor. Go all the way to the bottom of the file and add in the line kernel equals kernel8.img. Then save out the file. After that, we need to make a change to the slash boot slash firmware slash cmd line.txt file. So again, load that into your favorite editor. Go all the way to the end of the line and add in psi equals one. And then again, just save out the file. After this, go ahead and reboot. Now, the software we're going to be using to provide this Android platform is called Waydroid. It's based around containers and it will fire up a container that will run a fully functional Android operating system. Now, because this is running as a container as opposed to a virtual machine, all of the processes themselves will actually be running directly on top of the Pi 5. So you'll get the maximum performance out of them. Now, I've just switched to a terminal session here just so things are a little bit easier to see. But the first thing we have to do is install a couple of prerequisites for the Waydroid software. They're probably installed already, but just in case, let's try to install them anyway. So here I'm trying to install the curl and CA certificates packages with sudo apt install curl CA certificates minus Y. And as expected, both are already installed, so that's fine. Next, we use the curl software to download the install script for Waydroid. So that's what the curl https colon slash slash repo .id does. And then we pipe the output of that into sudo bash. So this will go ahead and install the Waydroid apt repository. And after this, we can install the actual Waydroid software with sudo apt update just to make sure that all of the packages from that new repository have been read in, double ampersand, sudo apt install waydroid minus y. 
And now that's complete, we can run up the launcher. The WayDroid launcher is set up into the launch menu under accessories. So you can just click it here to start it. Now it gives you a couple of options on which flavor of Android to download. Vanilla is literally that. It's just the very basic Android operating system. But there is a second option here for GApps and we want to install that. This comes with all of the basic Google applications, including the Play Store. So after this, we'll be able to install further apps onto our Android platform. Once it's all finished, you'll just get this done message. So just click done and the launcher will close. It will then start up the Android platform. And you'll get to this desktop. Once you can see the desktop running, come back to a terminal and run sudo waydroid shell. You then need to run an absolutely massive command that I'll just put in the description below so you can copy and paste from there. But all it does is it pulls back the unique ID for this specific Android runtime environment. So take a copy of this ID and then just copy it to your clipboard. After this, you'll need to navigate to the Google registration page. And again, I'll put a link to this in the description. In this little box, you just paste in the ID that you got from that command and then click the checkbox for I'm not a robot and then hit register. You will then get a little box pop up saying device registered. After this, just return to your Android session. Now what you want to do here is close the WayDroid session and then subsequently reopen it again by coming to the accessories menu and then rerunning WayDroid. If you have any trouble here and the WayDroid doesn't come up again, you can just return to your terminal and run the command WayDroid session stop. And this will kill off that session. You can then restart it again from the accessories menu. Once you are back on the desktop, just click on the icon here to start up the Play Store. And before you can install anything, you'll need to go through the sign-in process. So you'll need a Google account for this. So I'll skip through that and I'll come back once I've signed in. Once you're all logged in, you can use the Google Play Store with absolutely no problem and you can install whatever you want. Let's start off just by installing YouTube. And that's installed just fine, so let's open it up. And if I start playing a video, it plays just perfectly. Everything's great. And because it is running natively on top of the Pi 5, you don't have any of the same performance problems that you would otherwise have if you were running within a virtual machine. So running BPI top here, what you can see is that these processes, like the one for YouTube, is actually running natively on top of the Raspberry Pi 5. These are all, after all, just ARM64 applications, but you just need something to give it that little nudge so we can have that Android runtime environment to run in. And that's what the container provides. So you can see here that the CPU isn't actually being pushed particularly hard, even though we've got video playback going on. So it does work really well. And it's also true of gaming. Now gaming works really well on this platform as well. So I'm gonna install this racing game called Horizon Chase. I've just found it in the Play Store here and I just need to hit the install button. While that's installing, one of the other really cool things you can do is if you've got a controller like this one, this is an Xbox One controller, you can connect it to your Raspberry Pi using a USB cable, and then you can actually make use of it within your Android platform. All you have to do is run two commands. The first one is waydroid prop set persist.waydroid.udev true, and then waydroid prop set persist.waydroid.uevent true. Once you've run both of these commands, just disconnect and reconnect your controller, and you can actually control your Android UI from your controller. For instance, now I can just use my controller to hit the play button, and that will start up the game. Just before I start playing here, I should now be able to go up to the settings and to controls and now select my gamepad as my playing device. So now let's just get into a race.
And yes, my control is working absolutely fine. I can control the car with absolutely no problem. That doesn't necessarily mean I'll be any good at the game, of course. at the end I finished fifth I'll take that as a first game and so there you go running Android apps straight on a Pi 5 the WayDroid software is absolutely incredible it's really impressive to see a full Android operating system running within a container now not everything works seamlessly if you install something like Netflix or Prime Video you will hit trouble with it because this uses DRM protected video and there isn't any support for that by default in the lineage operating system. But for all other applications like browsers, YouTube and other productivity software, I find it works actually really, really well. And it's yet another thing that adds so much flexibility to the Raspberry Pi 5 and what you can run on it. But that's it for this video. Once again, if you like what you see here, please hit that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you want to see more and hit that notification bell so you can be told when I put a new video out. Let me know how you get on running Android on your Raspberry Pi 5. And if you've got any other ideas for projects that you'd like to see me do in the future, put those in the comments as well. Hopefully I will get to 5,000 subscribers by the end of the year. That's my target anyway. So all of the support and interaction that you can provide will really help out. Thanks so much for watching till the end, and until next time, bye for now.